Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here, Senior Trainer at Pragmatic Works. So if this is your first time watching one of our videos, uh, make sure to subscribe because we put out about two to three videos every week. We have live free events as well. Uh, we focus all on training. Uh, and if you've watched some of our videos, you want to deeper dive into any of this training material. We have an on-demand learning platform as well, and we do private training. So what are you here for right now? You clicked on the video. It's all about how do you take an application that you've made inside of Microsoft Teams and you're now ready to share it with other users. So what are some of the things that you need to think about? So uh, if, if you want to build an app from beginning to end, I think we're on like episode 12 of this series. Take a look at the links below in the description uh, to start off on episode one and build this application with me. However, if you're just like, Matt, I've already built an application. I just want to know how to share it. What are the table permissions I need to worry about? Then don't worry about building out the whole thing. So let's take a look at how that's done. So as you can see, I'm in the Power Apps application of Microsoft Teams. I'm in my team that I've built the app in. And from right here, what I'm going to do is click on See All. Because the first thing I want to do before I share this application out is set up the table permissions. So for example, let's talk about just the student table. When I click on my student table here and I come on up to the top and click on Manage Permissions, this is going to say, well, when you share this application, what kind of permissions do your users have? Uh, and these are by default for the members of the team, anyone you add to the team. So once a member is put into the team itself, that means they now have access to your application, but you can control what records they can utilize inside of this application. You do this on a table by table basis. So here are your preset controls or preset security settings that you can use. Uh, one is just full access. Create, read, update, and delete every single record on the student table. You have collaborate access. They can create records, they can read records from this table, but they can only update or delete their own. And then you can see we have reference for just reading, private where they can create, but they can only read, update, and delete their own. And then finally, maybe you add someone to the team, they can see the app, but you don't want them to actually use any data in the application because it's just a, a random person that you've added to the team, so to speak. They would have no access whatsoever. So you set these permissions up for all of your members of the team. Then you have the option to, to give colleagues outside of your team access to your application as well. Because maybe you don't want to add them to the team because you just don't want them there, but you still want them to use the application. So you then come on over and decide, well, for people I share with outside of the team, what kind of access am I giving them to this table? Uh, and we'll talk about how to share it to people outside of the team here uh, a little bit later in the video. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. So you set up all the permissions for your different individual tables. Once you have that set, you then go to the application that you want to now publish inside of your team. So I'm going to go to my student check-in application here. Once I go to the student check-in application, up at the top right, you're going to have a publish button. So what this gives you the ability to do as you've been developing your app, you've only been saving it. So even if you added someone to the team, they could not see your application at this point. They cannot see it until you officially publish it. The other thing to note is let's say we publish our application and then we go back tomorrow morning and we start making changes our users will not see those changes until we hit that publish button uh, for another time. So every time you have changes that you want to push out to your users, you always have to make sure you come up to your publish button. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm now going to hit my publish button. So it's going to save any changes that I've made, which I haven't made any. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to publish? I'm going to hit on next. Now, the first time you publish your application, you're going to have to choose what channel in this team you want to publish the application to. Now, I've already I've already published this application in the past. So once you've already published it and you've chosen your channel, you'll hit save and close. But basically, if it was your first time publishing, you would see your different channels. You pick that channel and then you hit publish. So I've already published it before. So I just have to simply hit save and close. Now that it's been published, I can go to my team and see the application itself. So I've gone to my team now, and then up at the top, we'll see all of our tabs that we have in the team. 
And the one that I want to go to is the student check-in application. So I'm going to click on the student check-in app and it's now like I'm a user of the application. Now you'll see it doesn't look that great. Uh, the reason being I had scaled to fit for one of my features turned off so I could write responsive controls to make the app fill up the entire space. Um, and those formulas aren't the, the most fun to do. And you might say, well, what if I just wanted to make it an easier experience without writing formulas for my users? You just got to kind of coach your users here. So if they hit the drop down arrow, they can click on pop out tab. So it'll be a brand new tab that they see. They could open up it in a browser tab as well or they can just expand this tab. So when I click on expand tab, now it looks a little bit better, more like what we're used to seeing, but they have a few different options there. So now they can use the application with whatever permissions that you have given them. So again, any member you add into your team, they now can use your application. But what if you wanna to share to people that are not inside of the team? Well, to do that, I'm gonna go back to Power Apps here, and I'm gonna go back into the build section. And then from here, I have the share with colleagues up in the upper right hand corner. If I click on the share with colleagues it say, okay, well, what Microsoft 365 group or Azure Active Directory security group do you want to share this with? So again, you would have to make the 365 group or the AD group. And then once you have a group, so in here, I've got quite a few groups here. So I'll just go with my uh, power platform trainer group. Now, what apps inside of this Teams environment do I want to give them access to? So if I want to give them access to the student check-in app, I hit on and then I hit save. Now my users can go to the Teams app store, search for my application, and then they can even pin it to the left-hand side so they don't have to always go over to the, the application, the, the app store inside of Teams and look for the app. They can pin it to the left-hand side. So I'm going to hit cancel here because that's just exactly all you need to do to share to other users who you don't have inside of your team. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series of building an app from beginning to end. If you didn't even build it, you now just went to this video to know how to share your app and where your table permissions are located. Uh, hopefully you, you learned quite a bit here. Uh, I'll be putting out a new series here in the future. Not quite sure what it's going to be on yet, but stay tuned for the channel to see what that is. So I hope you liked and enjoyed. And if that's the case, I'll be seeing you in the next series.